Okay, so Lucas, thoughts on Charizard? It's pretty fucking cool, Carl. It's fucking awesome, all right. Yeah. So as per usual, far away, Lucas, would you like to tell the audience what it is we're talking about today? Today, we are going to be looking through the a wiki entry for goddamn Charizard. Fucking too right, Charizard. And we'll be referring specifically to the Wikipedia entry on Charizard, because oddly enough, Charizard has one, because he's reached that <laughs> level of iconic where he gets his own Wikipedia page. And I love that. Like, Charizard is famous enough where, yeah, he gets a Wikipedia page. Like, there's some people probably pissed out there, like low-level actors who like backgrounds in like TV shows and stuff. They don't have Wikipedia pages. Charizard does. Think about that. And we'll start, as we often do, at the beginning. So Charizard, um, known in Japan as Lizardon. Oh! <laughs> what? Already fucking awesome. Uh, is a Pokemon in Nintendo and Game Freak's Pokemon franchise created by Atsudo Nishida. Uh, Charizard first appeared in the video game Pokemon Red and blue and its subsequent sequel. So Lucas, which one did you have when you were a kid? Did you have red or did you have blue? Because th this is the way you find out. It's the way you find out if we would have been friends when we were younger. So I'm very confused. So I might have mentioned this before, That's my but coffee. I I'm... always remember having blue until okay. years later, I found a copy of my Game Boy games. Mm -hmm. uh, like, well, I found like my box of Game Boy games and it had Pokemon red, not blue in there. That's like the Mandela effect in action right there. Like you yeah. remember as a kid, you remember it being blue and then it's red. What else about your life has been a lie, Lucas? We'll never find out. Instead, we need to talk more about Charizard. I had red, so we would have been friends, Lucas, don't worry. But actually, no, we wouldn't have been because you wouldn't be able to trade me any of the unique Pokemon. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like, fuck you, Lucas. Fuck you, like young <laughs> Lucas. You're not my friend. Uh, so they have later appeared in various merchandise, spin off titles, animated and printed adaptations of the franchise. It's known as the Flame Pokemon. That's pretty cool, that, isn't it? Just the Flame Pokemon. That was pretty uh, badass. Uh, what's your favourite descriptor of a Pokemon? Because I think I know what it is. Ooh. Like, like, so, like, Charizard is the flame Pokemon. Pikachu is the electric mouse Pokemon. Oh, no, wait, yeah. I know exactly what it is. It's is Arcanine. It? Which is the legendary Pokemon. <laughs> Even the legendaries in the game aren't known as the legendary Pokemon. <laughs> but fucking Arcanine is, because goddamn Arcanine's awesome. Shin Ishiro Miki, the actor who voices James in the original Japanese version of Pokemon, also voices Charizard in both the Japanese and English language versions of the anime. Hell yeah. That's a hell of a vocal range right there, isn't it? They, they voice James and a giant fire-breathing lizard. <laughs> That's a CV to be proud of right there. An orange draconic Pokemon, Charizard is the evolved form of Charmeleon and the final evolution of Charmander. It also has two mega evolved forms. Yeah, because fuck <laughs> you, everyone else. Mega Charizard X and Mega Charizard Y are both designed by Tomohiro Kitakaze. The introduction continues. Charizard is featured in the Pokemon anime series with the most recurring being from the main character, Ash Ketchum. It's featured in the printed adaptations, such as Pokemon Adventures, in the possession of Blue, one of the main characters. Charizard also appears in Pokemon Origin with the main character, Red, as its trainer. In this series, Charizard is iconic. That's a mistake. You should read fucking iconic, which was the first <laughs> Pokemon to Mega Evolve, and it helped beat Mewtwo, which might be the hypest moment in anything ever. Where, oh, for a brief God. moment, just Pokemon becomes Dragon Ball <laughs> and Mega Charizard starts fighting Mewtwo. And that scene is so good. I've not seen oh, it. Have you not seen it? Well, you, no. you will now, because you're going to put the clip in. And what happens <laughs> is, it's um, Red, who's like we established in the games, is like, yeah, he's unstoppable. <laughs> like, he never talks, ever. He just beats a Pokemon all day. Uh, happens upon Mewtwo and sends Charizard after it, and Charizard gets his ass beat, and they're underwater together. And then Charizard realises, no, not today, and just goes Super Saiyan and turns it Charizard X. <laughs> and then it does that anime thing where it punches Mewtwo so hard, even though Mewtwo's blocking, he gets sent back through a building. Oh my god. Sick. Why can't Pokemon be Dragon Ball now? I mean, from the looks of the new stuff, it basically is, Carl. It is, but I just want to see like more leaning into the fighting game mechanics they've introduced in some games, like um, in, is it Pokken Tournament, where they yeah. gave Pikachu Heihachi Mishima's moveset. I, I want to see in the anime Pikachu doing Hammer of the Gods to things, like, BOOM! <laughs> After the introduction, Lucas, we have um, a couple of sub-entries that we can open up and discuss. We have concept and characteristics, appearances, reception. 
Which one would you like to delve into? How about the concept? Okay, so conception. Charizard was designed by Atsuko Nishida for the first generation of Pocket Monsters, um, which were localized outside of Japan as Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue. Charizard uh, was designed before Charmander, the latter being actually based on the former. Oh. Oh, right. Charizard was invented first and they went backwards and went, okay, so what would, <laughs> what would evolve into this, this like, god beast? Yeah. Oh, man. Like, can we talk, though, about how adorable Charmander is? Oh, I love Charmander so much. But how much of a dick the Charmander in the anime is? Isn't it the one where, like, Ash finds it out in the cold? It's nearly dead. Its flame's nearly mm -hmm. gone out. He rushes it to a Pokemon center. He treats it with love, care, and respect. And then it does nothing but ignore him. It's like, motherfucker! No, to be fair. He only starts ignoring him when it becomes a fucking Charizard. After he helps it, and then doesn't it later in the series they'll become his friend when he realises maybe Ash wasn't such a bad guy? Um, I believe what happens is Ash, like, leaves him at a Charizard training camp. Oh, doesn't he get his shit beat as well because he's smaller than all the other Charizard? Yeah. But he realises, oh man, I'm not the big book of this lick, and gets his ass handed to him constantly and gains humility. Yeah, he like becomes humble. He gets humble by the bigger, older Charizard and he learns, man, maybe I shouldn't be such an asshole to Ash. <laughs> like, there's just something really harsh about, I always get got annoyed as a kid, because Ash is so nice to all of his Pokemon. Like, you always have like once per episode, a Pokemon gets injured, even if he's not his, and he'll run to save it. Like when uh -huh. he dives in front of like an electric shock or something, and he's constantly risking his own life to save Pokemon, and Charizard's such a dick. The one like, cool, like, excuse I've heard for that is that, oh, um, I'm not sure whether this is, like, actually true or not, okay. but that Charizard transforms so early and Ash doesn't have enough badges to train him. I've heard that, yeah, and the other one is that, um, like, Charizard needs strong-willed trainers and Ash mm -hmm. isn't, he doesn't discipline Charizard enough, so yeah. he acts aloof, which is one of those things where, like, motherfucker, Ash turned to stone for you. He turned to stone, he made all those kids cry. Is that up there, like, saddest moment from childhood? When Ash oh, turns to God, stone, yeah. and then all the Pokemon are around him crying, and then in the audience, like, you see parents going, oh, God, no, no, this is the rest of my evening <laughs> dealing with this shit. Anyway, so, uh, originally called Lizardon in Japanese, Nintendo decided to give the various Pokemon species clever and descriptive names related to their appearance and or features when translating the game for Western audiences as a means to make the characters more relatable to American children. And what's your favourite example of that, Lucas? Because my example is, and always will be, Marie, which is an electric sheep whose name is an anagram of Ampere, a unit of electrical measurement. Ah, uh, right, yeah. Which is fucking awesome. So what's your favourite clever Pokemon name? I think like Squirtle's up there for me, like cause it's a, a squirrel turtle. Well, that was literally the example oh, okay. I was going to use. Squirrel turtle, okay. Because he's a squirrel turtle, but then you um, put that together, and obviously Squirt is in there as well, like yeah, a thing that you do with water. It's so fucking clever. And then you've got Mewtwo. <laughs> oh man, which is the second Mew. But I really did like though that breakdown someone did when it's like, I think it's like the fifth, sixth generation and people were making fun of Garbodor. Oh yeah. And someone just posted a sarcastic comment of like, yeah man, I wish they'd go back to the original Pokemon designs when they were good, like Rock with Arms or some eggs. <laughs> or Pile of Goo. Yeah, so like they've, always been a little, they've always been a little bit bad, but just the yeah. one of like, some eggs. Anyway, <laughs> as a result, the Pokemon was renamed Charizard, a combination of the words Charcoal or Char and Lizard, which is so smart. Mm -hmm. Charcoal Lizard, it's a charred lizard, it's a lizard that breathes fire. During an interview, Pokemon Company president, oh god, oh god, Lucas, this name, uh, Tsunkazu Ishihara stated that Charizard was expected to be popular with North American audiences because of their preference for strong, powerful characters. Fuck yeah. Perfect. I think just everyone loves Charizard, he just looks so cool. Then you find out he's like five foot four, it's great. And not a dragon. <laughs> and not a dragon, but um, Executor is. A Lowland Executor with a really long neck. That's a dragon. Yeah, that is. Let's do that right now, because people might not be familiar with what we're talking about. So, um, uh, the, in Pokemon, you get various types, and Charizard is a fire-flying type. Yes, he is, yeah. Uh, but he's not a dragon. Uh, but other things that are dragons include a Lowland Executor, which is just a really big palm tree. <laughs> uh, what are the other really bad dragon Pokemon that don't look like dragons? Oh, let me do just like a minute of research for you, Isn't it as well, like, um, Gary Dose isn't a dragon, despite the fact it looks like one. Yeah, but it's a flying type. It's like, wait, what? It's a, it flies? That's terrifying. I will so address as well, like, with Charizard, at very least, um, 
he does become a dragon. Like they did address it for really one of his mega, mega revolutions. But it's the thing that he looks the most like a dragon, and he's not a dragon. Yeah. So do you have a list uh, of dragon type Pokemon up now, Lucas? Of like the ones that look least like the dragons. The cloud one. <laughs> oh yeah. It was um, just... It's just a cloud bird. It's just a big cloud. That thing's so tough as well. Oh god, yeah, it is. What else we got? What other stupid dragon type Pokemon we got? Yeah, uh, we got Gudra. Yeah, we should just. It looks like he's melting. It looks like a candle. Uh, what else? Oh god, yeah. Uh, we've got Applin. Oh yeah, I like that though because it's a little apple. But yeah, it like, is, it's like a tiny little dragon that varies itself into of an apple. But yeah, Charizard's not a dragon, what these like dumb fucks are, but oh man. God, I love Pokemon. And then they brought in fairy types. But yeah, fairy types are immune <laughs> to dragon moves. Like, yeah, so I mean Jigglypuff finally living up to a Smash Bros. potential. We'll move on to physical information. So whereas its pre-evolutions, Charmander and Charmeleons, are ground-based lizard-like creatures, Charizard's design is inspired by dragons. Although it's not a dragon. More specifically, <laughs> European dragons. Again, even though it's not a dragon. Um, Oh yeah, and it even says here, sorry I missed it, even though Charizard gains a secondary type flying instead of dragon. It does belong to the dragon egg group though, and it can learn dragon type moves. <laughs> it's not a dragon though. Charizard has two teal wings with a mostly orange back and body. Its plantigrade feet have the bottom mostly covered by a single pad that is cream coloured like its belly, while its eyes are light blue in colour. When Charizard is mega evolved, um, I don't care. So, you know what, Pokemon <laughs> doesn't care because they took it out of the game, so it's just skipped straight past that. <laughs> oh my god, it goes on for so long. So, um, the video game describes Charizard as having wings that can carry them close to an altitude of 4,600 feet, flying proudly around the sky and constantly seeking powerful opponents to quarrel with. <laughs> <laughs> so they just fly around looking for a fight. Man, Charizard's oh, a dickhead. It's like those guys in pubs who intentionally pick fights with people. <laughs> And they can breathe an intense flame that can melt any material, but they will never touch a weaker foe. Well, that's a good thing for Charizard then, so it only picks fights with people who are stronger than itself. <laughs> it's like, isn't that like the backstory of Machamps and stuff like that, where they just uh, they fight each other forever, just in the wild, and I pick think fights so, yeah. with people walking past? <laughs> <laughs> so you've just got these like ultra strong forearm Pokemon that can lift mountains, just constantly just suplexing each other. <laughs> Competitive battling, which has its own section. Uh, from its release in the first generation to the fifth generation, Charizard failed to make a major impact on the competitive scene. Oh. To the point where, and I quote, I'm assuming this is a quote from someone who plays competitive Pokemon, it wasn't seen in serious competitive play, and was, and I quote again, doomed to be forgotten. This relative lack of viability, combined with its relentless popularity, gave it an unfavourable reputation of a Pokemon that represents fanboys. <laughs> I was not expecting to see a breakdown of competitive Pokemon on a Wikipedia page, I'll be honest. No, not really. Because competitive Pokemon's like so incised. It even goes into here that it was crippled by the introduction of Stealth Rock. Which like basically, was, if people don't know anything about Pokemon, Stealth Rock effectively ruined the game. Yeah. It was so powerful and so all-encompassing, every single team had it. And yeah. as an example of how bad it could be for certain Pokemon, Charizard lost. 50% of its health upon coming into contact with it. And it was a move that you couldn't get rid of. It just was a pervasive, constant threat throughout the oh battle. God. It ruined competitive Pokemon. It's that bad. So, Lucas, we've got time to deep delve into one more thing. And we have a couple of subheadings beneath appearance here. We have in video games, in the anime, and in printed media. Which one would you like to discuss? Uh, tell you what, let's go for anime. Okay. So we both watched the anime, and we both like, you know... We love that show. It's so good. Yeah. Like, what a fucking powerful theme song, man. Play it during sex, it's great. Anyway, in the anime, the most notable Charizard is the one Ash Ketchum has had since he was a Charmander, abandoned by his former owner. Oh, man. Doesn't, don't they re-encounter the former owner? And he, like, throws a rock at Charizard it's weak. And he's just like, yeah, I don't give a fuck that I left him to die. He's like, oh, God. Yeah. And don't, don't, don't they encounter him again as well when Charizard's, like, super evolved and he fucks him up? Oh, really? I think they do, that might, be, that might just be me remembering that as a kid because that's what I wanted to happen. <laughs> well, that trainer was such a dick. He's like, yeah, I abandoned. It's, one thing is abandoning the Pokemon, but he abandons it in a rainstorm where rain kills Charmanders. Yeah, so uh, if anyone doesn't know, like, Charmander literally dies if the fire on its tail goes out. And you might think, well, that makes rain dangerous for Charmanders. And it's like, not really, no, because when they're happy, the flame burns bright enough to not be put out by water. And can, it can yeah. even burn underwater if the Charmander mm -hmm. or Charmeleon or Charizard is, like, strong enough. 
But it's just the fact that like, the guy just leaves it out and that isn't the that is one of the saddest shots of anything where it's the single Charmander just sat in the rain and it's oh. like the tiny little tail like that. No! <laughs> it's like Charmander, come on. It's so fucking he's like, come on, you can make it, you can make it. Oh, oh man. It says here though, so Ash's Charmander evolved into Charmeleon after a battle against an army of eggs. And his personality changed completely, becoming disobedient and prideful Pokemon, and fighting when and how he pleased. Charmander evolved when Ash <laughs> summoned him for a protection from a wild prehistoric Pokemon when he got attacked by an Aerodactyl. Oh man. Charizard still disobeyed Ash, preferring to sleep, and only battled Pokemon that pose a challenge. So that's fair enough, that's what Charizard does. Because it seems like a bit mm -hmm. of a dick move, doesn't it, to keep sending Charizard to fight low-level Pokemon. Um, yeah. <laughs> so Charizard's disobedience to Ash cost him the Kanto League. <sighs> I remember that. Yeah. Charizard refused to listen and it cost Ash the league and he still forgave him because that's what a good trainer does. Unlike that dickhead Damien abandoning oh Charizard. Damn it. So Charizard has saved Ash's life on multiple occasions. I've seen the film Spell of Unknown where he battled against Entai. Is it Entai or Entei? Uh, I've always said Entei. Okay, so Entei after arriving in the nick of time when Ash and Pikachu would fall into their deaths. Oh man, I love that. So like, <laughs> you're just stepping in whenever the fuck he wants. Yeah, but like when Ash needs him for a competitive fucking championship, he just lies on the ground and goes, nah. Nah, well, the thing I love about Charizard though is it always be the move Seismic Toss. Because oh, yeah. it's so lovingly animated, it's unreal. Like when it goes into sky in the sky and it starts flying around in a completely pointless circle, which shows you <laughs> the entire earth, and then it flies back down. It's like, oh man, it's great. Go Charizard, do it. And he just says here that he appears in a couple of other ones, but I only care about Ash's Charizard. It's like, man, that thing's oh, such God, a yeah. dick. But I love it. But then, um... And I love that idea as well. Oh, sorry. Doesn't Ash's Charizard come back to, like, I think it's, like, the Kalos region, and he uses Mega Charizard, Mega Charizard X? I wouldn't be surprised. Like, it comes back whenever the fuck it wants. But I like that idea that Ash keeps catching Pokemon and Professor Oak's really mad about it. Because every time they cut to Professor Oak on his TV, it was like 50,000 Pokemon that Ash has caught that like he's forgotten about. Yeah. Roaming around his house. Like, God damn it, Ash, you caught 30 Tauros. Please stop I was going to say, this. that time when he's just like, you caught like every fucking Tauros in the Safari Zone. What are you doing, Ash? He's like, they're all mine. I want them all. Oh, it's so <laughs> good. Oh, fucking, oh, that show's great. And shout out to you.